the Singer Start 1304 sewing machine needs to be cleaned on a regular basis. So I'm going to show you what you and I are supposed to do every three to five bobbins. You're going to notice that things are going to sound a little rough the more you sew. And if you don't take care of it, it's going to start to buck and break threads and not give you any fun in the sewing enjoyment. So. I, what I'm going to show you is super easy, doesn't take long. You are going to need to purchase some sewing machine oil and I'll show you how to keep this machine sounding nice and quiet. It does have metal against metal down here, so that is something that you will want to do. Have your screwdriver that came with the machine close by. Have your little brush and the one thing you don't want to do is actually use canned air. So if you have canned air, don't use it. We're not going to blow anything more into this machine we need to pull it out so if you need extra help you can use a brush that is fluffy you can use a makeup brush you could use a q-tip all those will be helpful so before we get started the machine is currently threaded now if you take this spool off the machine from the top and pull out there's usually going to be lint at the needle. So what, you're, what are you, you, you doing? You're going to be pulling all that lint up through the important parts of the machine. So I always have my students do this. We're going to take the thread and scissors. I'm going to clip the thread at the top and pull the thread out the needle. So everything comes out and not dragged back up into the machine. Let's go ahead and come in here. We're going to take the bobbin case out of the machine and we'll just set that aside for now. It's not a bad idea to actually pull the foot off. It just slides forward and then let's remove the needle, especially if you haven't changed your needle lately. Take your screwdriver, you can loosen the screw on the side and take the needle out because if you leave it there, it's actually kind of in the way and might actually stab you. So for safety, uh, I always, again, recommend that you take that out. So I'm going to get that. That's a nice tight screw. There we go. Next, take your screwdriver and loosen these little screws on the throat plate. Give them a little whirl once they're loose and peek underneath here. Now, if you haven't done this in a while, I think you might be surprised. And again, don't be excited and blow. That's kind of like the canned air thing. Don't, don't blow it in. We need to pull it out. So this is going to come out. This is usually where you're going to see a lot of lint. Now, one more level. We're going in even further. Next, you see these two black arms. They can be pushed off to the side, one in each direction. And there's two pieces that are going to come out. This is called a race and it has a little nub down here at the bottom that will line up for when we put it back together. And this is the hook. This is the part that actually goes back and forth. It twists back and forth for every stitch. That's what gets the thread from your needle to link around your bobbin. Pretty amazing, isn't it? All right, so get in here. We're gonna brush everything out, anything you can. Even if you have a vacuum cleaner with one of those small little vacuum attachments, that would be awesome to help get it cleaned out. Okay, so I mentioned metal against metal. So on this little guy, it twists back and forth. So this outside perimeter, and this is actually from another machine that I have. So I'm gonna just go ahead and show you. You're just gonna put a little oil along the outside there. You can even rub it on with your fingers. So you kind of see that there's a half of a moon in there now. This is the other half a moon. When it sits, and I, I know I'm gonna kind of get in there, my hands are gonna be in the way. There's a little, the sharp part is gonna kind of tuck underneath the part that's already there. So when it actually sits in place correctly, you'll see everything is nice and flush. You can even tip the machine back and help gravity um, be helpful there. And then this is what holds it in. So line up that little piece at the bottom and slide it until it holds. And you take the two black arms, put it all the way back together. If they click, and you can even hand turn the machine uh, around a couple times that will help spread out the oil, get it lubricated and do its job. And then we can put everything back together. So the one thing I usually do last is put the needle in. And again, that should be a new needle. Make sure this clicks in all the way with that little part at the top. Let's cut that, it's a little long. We'll put the throat plate back on. And if you notice a lot of lint, you'll be probably uh, more apt to clean it next time. Again, depends on your fabrics you're using. Just some fabrics are more linty. I can't explain, um, like, I mean, those fleeces and flannels, those are always 
culprits. You can, you can almost see what color you've been stitching with <laughs> or what fabric you have. All right, so I'm gonna just get them kind of mostly tightened with my spinning of my fingers there, and then we'll tighten those up with the screw driver. Now you did see me kind of pull the foot off. It does have a little mouth here. Make sure you pull towards you, not down. That would break its little lip off, so don't do that. All right, so here we go. That little bar on the foot, slide it up, push it in. And now's when I'll put the needle in. So again, new needle, if you uh, haven't changed it for a while, put it down through the foot, flat side to the back and straight up. Make sure it goes as high as possible and then tighten it down. Uh, you don't wanna tighten this too tight, but I am gonna give it just a little twist just to make sure it stays in place. We'll re-thread the machine, we'll sew. If you have oiled it, you might wanna sew on a scrap piece of fabric, make sure no extra oil is on your fabric and everything kind of gets lubricated up. So I'll lower the presser foot, thread my needle, bring up the bobbin thread. So I'm gonna hold my thread off to the side, take one full stitch, bring my bobbin thread up. And I guarantee if you haven't oiled for a while, you're gonna hear a difference in the way the machine sounds. And that way you can, um, <laughs> you'll know you need to oil this machine. So if things are sounding not so as smooth as it once was, that's really what it's asking for. All right, if it sews right, you have cleaned oil and reassembled correctly. Now, here's one more thing. When, you're, when you are doing a lot of sewing, this machine does require additional service. We always say once a year at our store. So I would say find a local sewing machine store that you can take it in. There's a lot of moving parts behind these walls here that also need oil, adjusting. They can make everything be back to like new condition with an annual service.